Live from Bellevue, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering Smartsheet Engage 18. Brought to you by Smartsheet. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Smartsheet Engage 2018, their second annual event, our first one here. I'm Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick, and Jeff and I are pleased to be joined right off the keynote stage, the SVP product, Gene Farrell. Gene, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here today. So, Packed House, this event has doubled in size from your yeah. first one last year. There's about a couple thousand people here representing 1,100 companies yep. uh, it, from 20 countries, mm -hmm. and you had a really cool interactive keynote this morning where you clearly showed very, I thought, organically how much Smartsheet is collaborating with your customers to drive your, the innovation of smart sheet technology. Tell us a little bit about some of those enhancements and how you got the crowd to burst into applause <laughs> at least three times. Well, I, I would tell you, thank you. Uh, I would tell you that uh, you know, at SmartSheet, our whole uh, product development process is driven by the customer. 95% you know, of what we decide to build on our roadmap is grounded in customer feedback. And so for us, anytime we can engage with customers, to learn not just what do they want, but what is the problem they're trying to solve. And that's really the, the art of great product management is going beyond just the suggestion to how are you going to use it? How does this help your business? Because many times there's a better way to do it than what they come up with. And so for us, coming into this Engage conference, I think we announced over 20 new capabilities that are going to be available either now or in the next couple months. And it was really easy to know we were going to get that applause because <laughs> they pretty much told us what to build. Uh, so you don't, we look really smart, but it's actually we're just listening. Uh, and so today we launched a, a number of great things like multi-assign to, new automations, multi-step workflows, a bunch of new connectors, a really cool uh, dashboard widget for all sorts of web, web content. Uh, and we just can't wait to see how customers use it. It's pretty interesting. Um, when you're up there, because we see this at a lot of little shows when they're just getting started, and I'll, I'll still call you guys one of the little shows, where kind of the intimacy is so much tighter, and, and really the knowledge sharing is very, very different than when you go to a big giant show that's got tens and tens of thousands of people. And you could feel it, it was palatable. I thought that was pretty brave of Mark to, to walk out into the crowd and stick a microphone in somebody's face. The guy responded, and he had an answer to the question of the way Smartsheet has helped him, and then I think he had two other people. Yeah, yeah. But What's really critical, we talk about automation a lot and processes a lot, but it's the scale of the simple that becomes a big challenge, and that's something that's squarely right in your guys' roadmap. Well, it's, it's, it's definitely what we focus on, and one of the things that we have as a value as a company is being authentic, right? And for us, regardless of however big we get, we know it's important to show up and be you know, the best of who we are and engage with our customers in a real and authentic way. And so I think that really helps us have that connection, and I hope when we're a billion dollar plus uh, revenue company that we have that same feeling. And this conference hopefully will grow to tens of thousands, but I think staying grounded in customers is just critically important. And I think how we differ from maybe some other folks in the technology space is, is we really focus on that everyday user. How do we provide practical innovation that has the power they need without all the complexity that turns them off or, or, or scares them? And, and, and that's not, um, it, it's something that nobody else really focuses on. And, and you hear a lot from, uh, from technical companies about their powerful new innovation and these great breakthrough ideas, but too many times it's engineers building for technically minded folks. Uh, and we've just chosen to go after a different group. I'm just curious how, how the people usually come into Smartsheet because you know, the workflow space and you know, there's just so many things out there that, that are all about the new way to work and you know, competing for my screen that I'm, that I'm working on sure. the majority of the time. So I'm just curious, where do, where do people find you? How do they usually enter? Because you've got a pretty broad suite of applications and you integrate with a lot of different uh, desktop tools. So what's kind yeah, of that yeah, process do you see? Yeah, I would say probably see? two primary ways. Uh, first is, we still have over 100,000 people every month that show up at our door and sign up for a free trial because they're looking for a better solution. They've been living hand to mouth with email and spreadsheets and they're just kind of overwhelmed by the, the velocity of work that's happening, the pace of change, and the old way isn't working for them anymore. And so a big part of how people find Smartsheet is just they go out on the internet and say, I, you know, I'm looking for a better way to be more effective or I'm looking for a new way to manage a workflow or a project. 
Uh, the other way, and about 40% of our, our, our new customers that sign up for a license come through our collaboration model. And it's actually kind of unique for us at Smartsheet. When you buy a Smartsheet license, you are entitled to share your work with an unlimited number of collaborators, both inside and outside your company. And those collaborators can, can view the work, but also participate in the process. They can update sheets, they can provide input to the, to the flow, and they actually get to engage and be part of that. And what we find is when people see the power of how other people manage and they participate, they realize, hey, well, you know, I want to use this for some of my so work. So it's not just a read only, it's that they can actually engage in my project that I've invited them to participate a absolutely. in. Absolutely, and, and the great thing for you as the, the license owner is you never have to worry, hey, I want to share this with Sue. Does she have a license or you know, do I have to go let her know ahead of time? You can share freely and not worry about people being able to participate. Well, you have a big pipeline, because I was reading over the weekend that there's about 650,000 active individual users, but about three million collaborators. Absolutely. Is yeah, that yeah. a differentiator for Smartsheet in terms of enabling that waterfall uh, of demand generation? Well, we, we certainly think it's unique, right? I mean, there's lots of folks that kind of go down the free tier path, where they say, oh yeah, I'm going to give you all the capabilities in a free tier, but I'm going to try and kind of ratchet it down so you, you run into these paywalls at every turn where you then have to kind of license the organization wall to wall. And, and we just feel that doesn't really work for us. For us, we think it's important that anybody that's creating value in Smartsheet should have to pay for the value that they're, they're using it to go create things with. But the people that they enroll in that process, until they actually are creating their own stuff, they should be able to participate for free. And we think it really fits nicely with how kind of modern work is evolving with a lot of teams, and, and frankly, a lot of teams across organizations. So, uh, interesting fact is almost 40% of sharing in Smartsheet is with people that are outside of the company sharing. So, if you're sharing with all those folks in different companies and working across different organizations, trying to figure out who has what licenses and how to do things is just going to be a nightmare. So we want to make that just completely frictionless. So one of the things this that is interesting about Smartsheet is that this is designed for the business user. You know, whether you're in sales, IT, mm -hmm. finance, engineering, a lot of different use cases. You talked about kind of the breadth earlier, Jeff. Walk me through, if I'm at a large enterprise organization and I need to launch an omni-channel marketing campaign, yeah. but I use email, I use Slack, we've got Salesforce, CRM, um, maybe some of my, maybe I'm going to be collaborating with a different function that's using a competitive solution. How do you help me, I need to manage this campaign, I need to launch it, and to mm -hmm. measure it. Mm -hmm. How do you help me connect my Slack, my teammates that aren't using it, that are on email, you're smiling big. Yeah. Walk us through that, what does that integration look like? Sure, yeah. Well I think the first thing to remember is, is we really focus on the 60% of work that's unstructured and dynamic. So this is the work that's constantly changing and many times left to the business user to figure out how to get things done. And we recognize that in, in managing that unstructured work, there are kind of different tools for different parts of the job, right? Just like if you go to any good mechanics toolbox, you know, he's got more than just a hammer in there. <laughs> and so for the business user, you know, they need messaging tools like Slack or email to communicate. They create new content with uh, document tools, whether it's G Suite or O365. Where they bridge the old world to the new world in the cloud, they need file sync and share. You know, people still have files, ironically, that sit on desktops, and so they need to be able to, to manage those in the cloud. None of those solutions is going to go away. You still need those for different things. Where we play is really helping people manage the what, when, and by whom. The, the, how do you actually execute the work? And, and today, there's not a great platform to do that outside of Smartsheet. And so, what we try to do then is work seamlessly with all the tools that they're using today. So, for, to answer your question, you know, if you're a Slack user, to get started with integrating Slack with Smartsheet, it's as simple as, from Slack, turning on the Smartsheet bot. That Smartsheet bot that enables you to receive signal directly from Smartsheet into Slack on update requests, notifications, approval requests, that you can then action with it without ever leaving Slack. You can actually approve a, an invoice. You can update Smartsheet directly from that Slack channel. The same types of integrations with File Sync and Share, where you can attach documents from a Dropbox or a OneDrive or a Box 
directly to a row or a sheet and, and, and have a connection to the other work. So you're not driving the user back to do everything through the Smartsheet app. I can be, I can share things through Slack, but I can also be right in Slack having a conversation with a teammate. Absolutely. And share everything through that directly. Absolutely, in fact, our integrations with our messaging platform, which is a core part of our strategy to kind of support how people work today in these modern platforms, really involves two types of integrations. There's a channel integration, so let's say you have a group of folks that are collaborating on some work, you've got a common sheet that you're using to actually manage the, the details of how you're going to get stuff done, and then you have a Slack channel set up for them to engage, communicate, make decisions, collaborate. You can actually send signal directly from that sheet into the channel where everybody sees it in real time. What about mobile? Totally, on, works on mobile and on desktop. Uh, and, then, and then we actually have the bot, the intelligent bot-based integrations that are more personal. So that's really your signal and in, in the actions that you need to take. So we're trying to really cover all bases and how teams want to engage with messaging. Just curious, as, as you've been rolling this out for a couple years, some of the, the crazier applications that you had no idea that people would use this application for this type of, of, of use case. If you could share some funny, uh, well, I, some yeah. crazy stories. <laughs> There's, there, there's certainly a broad <laughs> array of use cases and, 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 and there's a lot of times when you hear about a story and, and then you're like, well yeah, I guess Smartsheet would be pretty good for that one. <laughs> but, but I would tell you, the ones that to me I, I get most excited about are the, are the situations where a customer needs to, to do something really quickly because they're reacting to a signal or something that's happening in the market, right? And so one of the ones that I thought was really cool was actually last year's hurricanes with Harvey and Irma one of our large customers, Starbucks, actually used Smartsheet as a tool to connect with their teams and then manage the recovery. And what they realized going in was that these folks, are their team members are going to be on the ground in these areas that are, have been devastated by the hurricane and they're not going to have internet connectivity, they're probably not going to have power, they got to reach them through mobile. And so they set up a really simple process where every morning they pushed a mobile form in Smartsheet to all of their crew members in those markets and the first thing they asked them was, are you okay? Do you need help? And then, once they knew that they were all right, they then said, hey, are you available to work? We're going to, you know, your store's going to be reopening, we want to know if you can work. And then with the managers, they would pull on, what's the state of the physical location, and can we actually get open and start serving this community that's been devastated by this disaster? And, and they were able to, they literally came up with that idea and deployed it in a couple of days. Uh, and they were getting, uh, you know, if you talk to their CEO, he would tell you that, that he was getting reports every day on the status of who was available and how things were yeah. coming together. And then the funny part of that is they actually then were able to use that, that same Smartsheet mobile app to capture all the damage in store. And, and my understanding was it was the first time they were actually able to, to get full recovery on insurance claims after, after an event like oh, that. Oh wow. So, that's, all right. That's yeah. not particularly funny, but a real, I no, really love it. it's very impactful. But it's super important. But so we'll, we'll lighten it up a little bit before we let you go. In a prior life, you worked at Coca-Cola. I did. And, and you worked on the Freestyle. And for those who aren't familiar, Freestyle is, that, is the really cool vending machine when you go to McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever with all the push buttons. Yes. And, and what I find so interesting about Freestyle, it comes up at all the tech conferences. It was, it was really a digital transformation of brown sugar water Absolutely. into a phenomenal data stream that, that, that provided all types of, of, of transformational stories. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about that story and add a little color, because I think it's just a fantastic example of digital transformation of something that probably most people didn't think was possible. Sure, oh no, I'd be happy to. It's one of my, it's one of my favorite stories to tell, actually. It was, it was an amazing six year run for me, and really what got me into wanting to be in product. I, I had spent the first half of my career at Coke really in sales, marketing, and general management. And uh, the freestyle opportunity really came up because our engineering team at Coke had come up with an idea that was really designed to kind of save money on the supply chain. They thought, let's take the, the water out of all these, the syrup that we ship all over the country and we can make it a lot lighter and we'll save all this money. CO2 and, and all kinds, yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah, of benefits exactly, from exactly. driving water. And, and our leadership looked at that and said, hey, we think there might be something more here. And so uh, the president of the food service division at the time invited me to come back to Atlanta and he showed me this prototype and he said, we're not really sure what this, what this is going to be, but we want to put a business leader on this to see if there's something here. And he said it could be three months or three years, you know, never know, right? So I uprooted my family from Seattle, moved back to Atlanta, kind of a little bit on a, 
on a whim. Like we could have been, could have been over. And the funny thing is he said, you know, there's lots of jobs in Atlanta. What he didn't say was there's lots of jobs at Coke in Atlanta. So <laughs> I'm not sure if he was trying to tell me something. But, uh, but what was really fun about that was that, that Coke took a completely different approach for a 125 year old company completely different approach to innovation than what they traditionally would have done. Which would have been, hey, let's give it to the innovation group, let's have senior meetings every three months to decide what to do next. And, and they'll kick out new coke. And that's yeah, work yeah, out. Well, we'll kick out new coke. <laughs> so, but, so what they did was they, we, they empowered a small team. I basically ran it like a little startup. I reported to a board, I had no line reporting, and we, we kept it totally confidential. We isolated the team away from the rest of the organization, and we were allowed to just go run. And, they, and our, my board gave us everything we needed as far as resources and money, and we started with the consumer. And we said, hey, what is it that, that you would, if we could transform drinking soda away from home, what would that look like? And, and what we found was people wanted a lot more variety than what they were getting at that time. It used to be six choices, right? Five of them brown, one of them caffeine free, one of them diet. No caffeine free, I mean it was just like, we were missing the boat, right? If you went to, if you went to a 7-Eleven, there's 3,000 choices. Right. You go to McDonald's, and six. And so, they wanted a lot more choice, and they wanted to be able to pour the drink themselves. And, and so, we thought that was a, a really powerful insight. What was interesting about that is they didn't trust the kid behind the counter to get it right, which I think is kind of ironic. But um, at the end of the day, we invented the technology around this idea of providing almost unlimited choice and really enrolling the consumer in the process of creation. And, and it was amazing. When, when we delivered that to our end users, we saw 50% increases in volume. You know, remember, this is, a, this is a brand that's growing two, 3%. And a super, um, super mature marketplace. Yeah, super mature market, complete game changer. And it really unleashed this sense of creativity with consumers around what's possible, right, on the drink side. Now on the business side, what was transformative for the company was that this was a completely wired experience. And, and it had to be, frankly, to pull off delivering 125 different choices in a restaurant, you got to arm that customer with lots of information about what do they need, how to configure, how to service. And so those machines were all connected and they provided tons of great data on what consumption was happening in, inside the restaurant, but also, air logs on the equipment, what, how everything was performing, and so it really led to a completely rethinking how do you actually manage a network of connected devices. And it was kind of funny because we were really kind of pre-cloud. Pre when we first started, you know, <laughs> we were, yeah, we, were, we, we had the machines called home every night using a, a, a wireless modem. We actually started, we, we did a contract with an IT service provider to provide uh, servers to actually house the data. And we, we did this contract, oh, these will hold you for like three years. Within a month, we were running out of server capacity because of all the data we were getting. And so it was really, it was super, super fun. And we, and we iterated that. I spent six years on that and, uh, and really it was, it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Probably one of the most relatable digital transformation stories. Right, right. And you guys are also doing that at Smartsheet. Gene, I wish we had more time. We thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE. And one of the things I like that you said in the beginning, and we'll leave it with this, is that you, Smartsheet is authentic. And I think authenticity is contagious. So thank you for your time. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thanks. And for Jeff Frick, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Smartsheet Engage in Bellevue, Washington. Stick around, Jeff and I will be right back with our next guest.